Hi, everyone. I would like to welcome Shannon and Justin from Ohio to our fifth annual Giving First Giveathon. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you are the parents of Olivia who battled DIPG for 18 months before gaining her angel wings just this past April. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you both so much for um, coming on here and um, sharing with us about Olivia. Um, I know it's not easy. Um, I know you probably have some bittersweet emotions with this. Um, it's probably definitely hard to talk about it, but at the same time, you probably love talking about her. So thank you so much for, for joining us. If you don't mind, please tell us all about Olivia, what you loved most about her, what she was like, and maybe even like a funny favorite holiday memory. You wanna start? Mm, she just brought so much joy to everybody she met. She was the happiest little kid I've ever seen. Mm -hmm just loved to have fun, made the best of every situation. She could walk up to a stranger on the street and make a friend. Yeah. She was silly, um, eccentric. She was girly, but not like she was, um, I mean, she was one of a kind for sure. Like she was, there's nobody else like her. Um, yeah, she was, I mean, she was, such a light, like such, like she was just like such this bright light that you could not replace. Um, she's irreplaceable. And she loved things like everything from Barbies to Power Rangers and pickles mm -hmm. and Jack Skellington Nightmare Before Christmas. She was, I mean, the things that she was interested in and enjoyed were so different than like the average kid. I think she was just very well-rounded. Um, and she loved dance and she did a little gymnastics like her big sister, but dance was definitely her thing. Um, and yeah, she just, she was, she was so fun all the time. We had a lot of dance parties, um, <laughs> in our house and she was always like the lead of that. Can you tell me a little bit more about the pickles? Like what, <laughs> what did she love about pickles? Like what, what is, what drew her to pickles? I don't know. She randomly one day at, started saying, oh, pickle. It started it, but like, <laughs> then she would do it like at gymnastics all the time when we were there for our, her older sister, Emma, and everybody thought it was so funny because she would just say pickle. And so they like egged it on. <laughs> so it became this thing. So then even like one of her doctors was, we, she named him Dr. Pickle. And then when she got a, the, a new one, it was Dr. Cucumber because- <laughs> She was new and fresh. And so it's just funny because it was something that had started well before she was sick. And so then she was interested in all things pickle. So that's why we have all these pickles. Um, because that was like her thing was pickles. So I now, mean, yeah, so now we see a pickle and then you think of Olivia. <laughs> well, I see a pickle and I think about Olivia because I, I follow her journey and, and your guys' journey from the beginning and everything that you described her, I could see through your guys' story on social media. I could feel all of that. And um, I was drawn to her and I was drawn to your family and there, there's just something about her um, that just made me fall in love and adore her. I mean, she was definitely um, very special to me. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And as you guys can see in the picture that um, Shannon's holding, mm -hmm. Olivia was, is a beauty. I mean, she, she's perfect. Um, so my next question may be hard, um, but do you mind sharing with us Olivia's journey with cancer? So she was always a little less, I guess, sure-footed than kids her age, mm -hmm. but we didn't really think anything of that. You know, mm -hmm. she'll grow out of it. But then when her eye started to cross a little bit, it was um, during COVID. Shannon took her to an optometrist once we were actually able to with COVID. Um, and then I think we tried glasses to see if that would correct it, but not worse. So then I took her to an ophthalmologist 
who looked deeper into her eye and found um, swelling in the optic nerve and said there's only so many causes for that and you should take her to children's hospital now and get further testing done mm -hmm. that is what started it all yeah because the next day they went to the er then they got the scans and then she was admitted she got a shunt her shunt placed the next morning and then the official diagnosis was um october 16th of 2020 where we met dr filati and our team um and then we went on from there so and i will say i will say that obviously when we met i don't even remember her name the doctor who did her shunt surgery i'm we met, i asked her about it and she was basically like it's not good like it's not a good diagnosis because we didn't have a diagnosis at that point we hadn't i hadn't met dr filati we hadn't sat like he had met her we hadn't sat down together and I remember sitting like in the hospital room, we were waiting for Olivia to come back from surgery still. But like, I remember saying to him, I don't want her to die. I don't want her to die. Like, because in the way that it was presented was essentially that she's going to die. Then we meet Dr. Filati and she literally says, we go into this with hope. There's not like a time, like we're not putting a timeline on this. We're not putting, we're not giving up hope. We're saying we're walking in this with hope. And her saying that to me is what allowed us, I think, to walk through it the way that we did, mm -hmm. because I never gave up hope. Mm -hmm. Even when I knew that we were at the end of, you know, her fight, like I just, I could feel the difference at the end. Mm -hmm. um, I still didn't give up hope because the way that she passed as well was so, with so much love and so surrounded by love and she passed so peacefully mm -hmm. that I knew that she was okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was, it was very hard. She did two rounds of radiation. She had a shunt surgery, a shunt what, revision, revision, um, obviously a million MRIs. Um, so we did all the things, but she was literally happy pretty much for the entire time like she was joyful and amazing and she was even mobile really like she even once she was wheelchair bound I would say this time last year um we got to the point in January February where she was like walking with assistance sorry my cat. <laughs> where she was walking with assistance um and doing all kinds of stuff again so the the end for her was really only like a two, three week period. Mm -hmm. And so I'm grateful for that. Right. But obviously we would, we wish she was here still. So. Right. Well, both of the trials that Olivia participated in, um, I don't know if you know this, but both of those were fully funded by the Cure Starts Now. Um, mm -hmm. So be because of the donations that are received, kind of like the donations that are going to be received tonight, um, that that helped um, provide research for two clinical trials that your daughter was on. Um, so yeah. that's that's why donations are important. You know, uh, we we need to find more research. Um, so with that being said, uh, you joined an army of parents tonight who are fundraising in honor of their warriors. You have also became a bigger part of the Cure Starts Now family by becoming an ambassador. Can you tell me why you feel it is important to continue the fight and continue to fundraise? I mean, this is probably, I, I would consider this the most awful pediatric cancer personally. Um, I feel like with finding a cure to this, you're going to help not just kids who suffer from DIPG, but so much more, so many more kids. And I feel like if people don't start understanding that the funding is the piece that we're missing because without having the funds, like it's what, like 4% of funding is pediatric cancer, but isn't it like less than 1% or something mm -hmm. that we actually get? So my personal opinion is we, we, we save our adults for our kids. So at what point do we save our kids first? Because they're our future. Um, and so without funding, there's no research and without research, there will never be a cure. That's why we are where we are right now because we don't have enough funding. Uh, perfectly said. And um, you, you even said that in a quote that you sent to me for giving first. Um, do you mind if I share that? Mm -hmm. 
Um, you had said, we miss our beautiful girl every day and do not want other families to have to go through the loss of their children to such a horrible disease. More funding means more research and a cure. And you're right. Um, awareness equals funding, funding equals research, research equals the cure. Mm -hmm. Well, family truly never fights alone and we are thankful to have you as part of our team. It is our mission to find the home run cure. Although we, are not, although we were not able to find it in time for Olivia, she and so many other angels are our why. They deserved more. And together with all of our families, we will not stop until the cure is found. Thank you guys so much for sharing your journey, for sharing your girl with us um, during her fight and, and keeping her legacy alive um, after her fight um, because together we'll find the cure. So tonight, give first for Olivia because our children deserve more than leftovers. Olivia deserved more. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you.